talked about in that. Awesome. Uh, some of the stuff that we talked about in that first um, session. And let me share my screen really quick and see. Excellent. And while we are um, getting this set up, just so folks know, this is being recorded. So if you don't want your face, to show up on YouTube. I mean, we don't have like a ton of subscribers or anything, but people might see it. And um, if you have questions during the session, I will be keeping an eye on the chat. So please feel free to submit them there and I will keep hold of them until there is a good time to ask. You can, any. You can see the first slide? Yes, looks great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, thank you guys for uh, coming out today. And uh, I hope this is kind of a, a fun thing for us. Kind of, we're going to be going back and taking a look at the the library's website, a couple of different applications, uh, web applications that are built um, by the development team inside of Arit and other people as well in the library. You know, it was a lot of people contributing to some of these applications, and we're going to go back a, a substantial amount, kind of covering not in great too technical detail, but some of the techn technology developments um, that kind of progressed and evolved our websites, some of our web applications, and going to what I hope is a discussion about uh, Microsoft MVC, uh, its use inside of the Digital Library on American Slavery Project, and moving a little bit forward from there, uh, what it means, generally speaking, for the library itself, right? So when I'm talking about uh, websites at this point, or at this part, is just essentially just HTML and all the little bits of HTML that are put together by a web server whenever you go to a website, right? So if you go to library.uncg.edu, you try to load the page up, and you get an HTML web page, that's essentially what we're talking about. And if we go back into the, the way, way back machine, let's take a look at our site. So if you go back to, I believe this is 1998-esque, this is what the Jackson Library website looked like back then, right? Late 90s. And at this point, uh, pages are just straight up HTML pages, right? There is a, a web server sitting there and there's a page with a .html on it with HTML text inside, right? And so there are individuals in the library at this point that are just maintaining the website itself, right? You have to go in, uh, we've all done this, you go in and you edit your HTML file and the page gets updated, right? And this, this is what the Jackson, well, with the exception of the image over here, this is what the Jackson Library website looked like. Not too different from what it is like today, I hope. And so what we're looking at now is another page that has information, uh, database information sitting on the old Jackson Library website, right? So at this point, if you're just putting a site together and you're putting HTML files together, you know, when you're putting a page like this, it's not necessarily so bad because there's just a couple of HTML edits that you're making with your links or whatever. But as we can see here, when you start getting into dozens of pages, hundreds of pages, all sorts of information related to the record itself, sort of trying to maintain these pages starts to become a little bit more complicated and a little bit more difficult if a link changes some other piece of information on that database if on this on this page has to change then somebody actually has to go in and make that edit manually right and so if i take a look at another page this is of course the search the internet page and if you guys can tell me you know uh, the top five search sites at this point you guys will get a magic star. I actually need to talk to Tim about this because this page needs to be updated a little bit. I don't know if Alta Vista is still a search engine at this point or whatever, right? And, and so when we look at these pages, it's just straight up HTML, no big deal, right? The problem starts happening when you start having 
hundreds of pages. And so companies started realizing that it would be easier to, to start putting data into like a backend database and start building out or building frameworks that manipulate the data on the back end and create HTML on the front end, right? We're going to call those like web application frameworks, right? So for our purposes, we do have databases on and on a, on a different servers, and we pull information from there. As you can see here, we have different tables and different types of information, right? And this is where sort of websites start stop becoming websites and start becoming full data driven applications right we're talking about having a piece of information on the back end a data set for example and we have a layer of code in our framework that grabs the data out right and then we have another layer in our framework we'll call that the business layer and that's where we take the data and we start manipulating the data, changing the way it looks, uh, pushing the data into different pieces of what, whatever framework that we're using at the time, whatever like business decisions that we have, right? And then that data then goes to the presentation layer. And that's where we throw the data out and we produce an HTML page based on uh, all sorts of factors that we do in the data layer, the, the business layer, and all of those things combine to put an HTML page together, right? So you had a lot of different frameworks at the time. A lot of companies were putting stuff out and we went with uh, the Microsoft framework and sort of um, using their software to put pages together, right? So some of the first data-driven uh, software that we use or framework that we used to put data-driven websites together is, if you guys can remember, the Way Way Back Machine are called active server pages, right? And so this technology is very kind of scripty. It, they're designated with .asp pages, right? And like I was telling you in that other slide, the presentation and the business layers, right? The manipulation of that data and how we put it on the front end are all on the same page. And let me show you what that looks like really quick. And let me see. Okay. Are you guys seeing this page? Awesome. 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 Okay. So in ASP, this is uh, some of the, it was very difficult to actually find some of these pages that that are existing. This is uh, one of the pages that we use to build the lib staff page. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So in an ASP page, we have all sorts of, of uh, code and script on the page itself, right? We can see some variables that we're creating. We can see our connections into the database itself. And then later on in the page, we get to see some of the HTML that we're building, right? We're trying to build a table. We're trying to put information into a table. And all of this is pretty standard HTML stuff, right? Table headers, all sorts of bits and pieces, right? And that's the page itself, right? The index page is essentially just one page where in classic ASP, where the code, which is VB, uh, VB script at the time uh, is all on one page, right? Now, let's take a look at this on another another page itself. Uh, I think this is an old application where we used to set up meetings and stuff for the library. And very similar, right? It's just a little bit of script. Here we actually have some more HTML doc type, you know, declarations. We can see body code, all sorts of information on the ASP page itself, right? So let me go back here really quick. And again, this is sort of mid to late 90s where this technology started taking off, right? So let's take a look at the library website under uh, an ASP sort of framework, right? 
So you start to see how the site itself is a little bit more interactive. You start to see a little bit more information uh, and more connections to data on the back end, right? So we start to see here uh, a search box on the left hand side. We have breadcrumbs that are more programmatic. And, and at this point, it's not just that everything is code. At this point, we're, we're still using HTML, but we're adding little bits and pieces to the site with some data backends. So if I take a look at another site, I don't know if you guys remember this stuff. This is uh, some of the before libguides. Uh, more information, um, uh, different libguides and different information for the students, right? And you start to see more of that interactivity in the site itself. Again, we have breadcrumbs here, and, and these aren't necessarily pages that are just the maintenance of HTML, right? On the back end, we have uh, uh, databases that are pushing out information for links to other resources, and you have information on, on the tabs itself and sort of kind of that more interactivity and connectivity to the site, right? One of the first apps that was built in ASP, not the first, but one of the ones, one of the big ones, I don't know if you guys remember, Journal Finder, right? Journal Finder is a completely data-driven website built in classic ASP. So you saw in, in the, uh, the HTML page, uh, the, the database page, where you had to maintain these pages uh, one by one with just HTML information, right? And that's fine if you just have, again, a couple of dozen you know, links, a couple of things to do on the page itself. But in an application like Journal Finder, you have thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of records. And you start to see we're trying to maintain the HTML on an application like that would be completely difficult, right? Any piece of information changes, you'd have to go back and change the page itself, right? And this is where we start talking about everything uh, becoming more data-driven, right? The other things that ASP lets you do is to kind of expand out what you can do to a page itself, right? So we can have different kinds of searches different kinds of interactivity inside of the page itself, different search things, different search types, and the ASP itself will change the type of search or we can code different types of things to pull different kinds of information out of the page itself, right? And I wanna say that this is probably early 2000s. And you start to see where instead of just HTML pages, we have sort of that interactivity, right? Now, that's not to say that there still isn't HTML on the page itself. If we take a look at this uh, library hours of operation page, this is 2004, 2005. This is still hard coded HTML inside of the ASP page, right? So you would go to the ASP page and you would see the HTML sitting in that file and you can make changes to it, do updates and all sorts of stuff with it. But there's other ASP parts that the server will actually build for you like you know this little bit right here the breadcrumbs if i take a look at some of this the way way back machine uh we can look at uh more html the the old information commons page which that's kind of interesting to see as well again this is just html and uh, uh encoded into an asp page right so what starts to happen at this point and we're talking like early 2000s is developers, web developers, start looking at some of this technology and it starts to change. They want to make an application more, more, uh, more separated. Um, they want to, to make the web server kind of understand other pages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we'll look at, see what I'm talking about. I'm going off on a tangent here. So Microsoft develops the next technology after classic ASP and that we call ASP.NET web forms, right? If you take a look at that date, actually Microsoft is currently celebrating the 20th anniversary of putting web forms together, right? The ASP.NET platform and 
web forms. It's quite spectacular that people are still using this even today in their websites. Actually, in fact, people, I know people that still use classic ASP to build their website as well. So it's really interesting. So these pages, right, web form pages, ASP.NET web form pages are denoted by an ASPX, right? And you, if you go right now to the library website and type in library.uncg.edu slash index.aspx, that is your ASPX page, right? And with ASP.NET web forms, that presentation and business layers of a data-driven website are separated, right? And let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to go back into my code and I'm going to open up an ASP.NET page. Let's go to, I don't know, the main library page. So if you guys are looking um, and it's all working, like I was saying, the presentation and the business layers are separated. So we have an index.aspx page and attached to that ASPX page is a page of code, right? So let's look at the index page. And what we essentially have is our little bits and pieces of HTML with um, places where we can attach our data to, right? And right now it's just HTML and little bits and, and little things like that, right? We do have some dynamic stuff happening up here with some other bits of code loaded or coming into the site itself. And if I take a look at that pre that business layer on the back end, very similar. It's very, uh, the code itself is uh, similar to ASP, but like I was saying before, it's completely separated out, right? So you see all sorts of stuff happening on the back end, uh, data connections happening, and things being built on the website itself. Uh, let's take a look at some of the staff pages to kind of see what that looks like as well. This is a ASP web form page for building out the staff, the staff directory, right? And this one works a little bit differently. Inside of here, you have uh, some HTML, you can kind of see a header but you also see these sort of ASP little bits, right? Little little pieces of code over here. So what these enable you to do is sort of help you, it helps the developer sort of um, manipulate and, and put data into this part to build out a piece of HTML, right? And so when I look at the back end of this, I can kind of see that, hey, I'm grabbing something from the database and I'm throwing that into the page itself. So what happens here is the server goes, you go to the website, the server loads the page up, grabs the data and throws it into this piece of uh, a front side code and you see HTML as the result, right? And at this point, ASP.NET web forms uh, the, the, the way the server is built, it's a little bit more aware of what the other pages are doing, right? So we have like inner code and outer code. And if I take a look at some of that, I can kind of see uh, different parts of the server itself, building out different pieces of HTML. And it starts to become a little bit more with built with different components and different pieces. And all those are sort of like little snippets of HTML and things that are happening, right? You start seeing more, uh, even where ASP, you had some connectivity and some manipulation of the page with ASP.NET web forms, it starts happening a little bit more. You have more control over what you're doing with that website, right? And let's take a look at an example of this. So this is the site back in 2009-ish, right? These are some of the first instances of library.uncg.edu slash index.aspx, right? Very pretty, very awesome, uh, very useful, right? 
So you start seeing a little bit more of the data coming out. On the right hand side, we have data coming out from Spotlight, information from the blogs. I believe on the front end, uh, the top part, the top bar over here, this is a rotating piece of uh, HTML that kind of shows you all the different things going on in the library. We now have a more interactive search bar, right? So you have you can search different things and different pieces. And I think at this point too, the site itself, because of uh, that interactivity and that connectivity with the data, the site itself changes. I think at this point, the, the look and feel of the site changes based upon what time of the year it is, right? So this is what, uh, this is in February. And let's take a look at the site. And I think this is later on in the spring. And this is all possible because of the way that uh, ASP.NET Web Forms allow us to connect and manipulate the HTML based on those business, you know, and data sort of decisions that we're making on the back end, right? Isn't that pretty cool? Very, very pretty. So one of the other applications that we built around this time is uh, NC Docs, right? And with NC Docs, again, we're looking at uh, ASPX pages that are putting together snippets of code. All this stuff on the top is a snippet of code. The stuff in the middle, things that are going on in the middle, that's another snippet of code. And this right here is another piece of code. And not only is it uh, just, you know, different information, but it's also diff based on different data sets on the back end, right? We have a data set kind of pulling out information about schools, the data set information pulling out stuff about the author's last name, and a data set coming out with, um, you know, the, all the information to, on a based on a search, right? And you start to see that that interaction, that connectivity, the usefulness of the page itself starts to become better, right? We can do more because we are able to do more on the back end. We have more data. We have more information that we can manipulate. And so the site becomes more interactive, right? Look at NC Docs with, uh, e this, I think this is ECU. The entire page changes, right? Based on uh, information that we're that we're manipulating on the back side, right? On the, the code that we have on the back end, the colors itself change, the search changes, the menu bar changes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? It keeps going on and on. So as as you know time went on and uh, the developers started getting uh, more uh, started getting better at building these HTML sites, right? Building these, these web application sites, the sites themselves become more interactive. And you end up with a site like this, which is a completely data-driven website, right? So on, on the bottom here, you can see that we have all sorts of information. The data is coming from different places, right? These are blogs, news events. In the middle, we had uh, information that was coming from um, the OCLC uh, 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 server, with information that we were pulling about things that were checked out, right? And this is all data-driven. Uh, when we had the reservation scheduler, uh, we decided to put in a little snippet of code so you can actually make the reservation straight from the website itself, as well as you know, student coming in and taking a look and seeing if the library is open, right? And you start to see, you know, if you remove the data from the back end of this, there's nothing on the page except, you know, maybe the search bar, maybe a couple of little pieces, right? And so you start to see sort of that evolving of using the, AS, the, the ASP.NET Web Forms platform, right? If I take a look at the hours page, this information is coming from a Google Calendar, right? And so we're essentially pulling information from the data set that we have 
we're manipulating that data in the in the business layer and presenting it right and you start to kind of see all those little bits and pieces the the i keep saying that word the phrase or whatever um and you start to kind of see the uh, the, the breadcrumbs the library is currently closed things change on the website based on the data set that we're providing to it right isn't that cool very very cool this is the old research page and on the right hand side we had a little snippet of code with some resources based on the page that that we're in that would change if you went to another page this this these this information would change as well right so you start to see more of that connectivity that's not to say that there isn't any html like hard-coded html on these pages these links right here the links on the left hand side that is still some html we have uh, other html and other pages but using that asp.net web forms framework gives us more opportunities to put a more interactive uh, a more connected site more decisions being made by the data that we're bringing in from that back end right and i want to say that this this page these pages are what are we looking at here 2016 right so just a couple of years ago this is what the site looked like not too bad so with asp classic asp and asp.net web forms on the server itself right the library server there is a file each page that you're looking at on the library website is a file right so if I, when i go to library.uncdw.edu there's an index page doing you know sitting there with the code you know separated but the file is still there you go to the hours page there is a folder with hours and a page sitting there that you know you sort of interact with but the pages are all sitting on the server same with asp there is a corresponding page to what you're doing on the web server right and that's not necessarily a big deal uh depending upon your your development environment right but so with the digital library on american slavery we had this project that we had to get done and right smack dab in the middle of it i think as we've talked about these last two or three sessions the work environment changes right so there are we now have people working from different uh, systems in different locations at different times. And so when you start talking about putting or putting together a website or a data driven website, and you have people now working in different places, the idea of trying to manipulate one page with two or three different people at the same time starts to become a little bit harrowing right and, and you may be trying to make changes to a page on the website and there may be another individual trying to make changes to that website or somebody else updates that information and so in that kind of work environment those things become a little bit more difficult right and that's what COVID-19 did uh, to us during the development of this project so we had an opportunity at this point to kind of kind of reassess take a look at and try out uh, newer technologies to see if they could actually help with the development of these web applications right these data-driven websites so in looking at this the the solution that came up that looked like it would work for us is um, a framework called ASP.NET MVC. And we'll get into what that looks like here in a little bit. Uh, that started around 2009. And what's interesting about MVC is that there are no pages, no corresponding pages inside of MVC with the HTML that is coming out of the page itself, right? The display and business layers are still in that MVC framework. 
but they are reorganized in a different way. And let me show you what that looks like. And I'm gonna use DLAS here as an example, right? So with MVC, if I take a look at the server files, right? This is the server itself. If I go to DLAS dot second, Let's go into these. All right, you would expect, okay, I'm on the dlos.uncg.edu server and I'm in the deeds folder or the deeds directory. That's how it would work before, right? If you went to the library website, you went to the ref page, there was an actual file sitting there, whether it's classic ASP or ASPX, there was a file corresponding with the information that you were trying to get to. In MVC, that is no longer the case. The idea of a website being a web application is completely and fully realized, right? So let me, let me show you a little bit of how this works. So we're on the deeds page, right? So MVC stands for model view and controller. The controller sort of tells, when you go to a website, let's say the deeds website, the controller sort of looks at what you want to access and it grabs the M part, which is the model part, right? And we'll take a look at what that looks like. And it grabs that model and throws it into the V part, the view part, right? So if I go into like the deeds controller and let's take a look at what the person page looks like. Let me go to a search really quick, just so you can see the corresponding pages and see what it looks like. So this is a person, right? And let's look at MVC. So the controller, when you go to like that person page, it's gonna go and say, okay, this is the person and we're gonna grab the information based on a key. And we're going to do a couple of things, little business manipulation things and throw it out into a view. We're gonna grab that person and throw it into that view, right? That code. And let's take a look of what a person looks like at MVC. And let's open up the M part. And all this is, is just sort of like the guide or the framework with which the data is put onto the page, right? And you'll see all sorts of information and attributes and stuff based on that object, right? It's just a person object. And all we're doing is coming in here, grabbing that person. And the controller and the application are sort of aware of what a person is trying to do. So when I go to that person page, it's like, okay, we're going to the person page. We need a person. Let's grab that information from the data. And we're going to put that information onto the page itself. And there is a corresponding bit of HTML. And let's take a look at what that looks like. And string all of this together, right? So you will see some HTML right, some HTML pages, and a little bit of code, right, we're sort of taking the name of that person, uh, all of their little attributes that you saw in the model, and putting together the HTML page, right, that's pretty cool. Now, some views don't have any kind of data attached to them at all, right, so if you go to DLOS and take a look at the FAQ page, it's just straight of HTML at that point, right, the per, you go to the fact page, the server, the controller goes, okay, we'll, all we're returning back is HTML at this point, and it spits out an HTML page. And I can take a look at that if I click on the page itself, right? And that's the big difference of MVC. If I look at the URL, there's not a page sitting there. What I'm doing in MVC is sort of issuing 
commands to the application, right? If I go to deeds, I'm telling the server, I want to do, I want to go look for deeds, right? And I can actually go to the URL and you guys can try this as well. If you go to dloss.uncg.edu slash deeds, I can actually try a name, try your name. And I now have results based on a command that I am issuing to the server, right? Isn't that cool? I can actually go about this the traditional way and use uh, the search at the web form right here itself. I can type in John and do a deed search. And the URL is a little bit differently, right? But it still works the same way. We're issuing commands. What, what's happening on the back end is, like I was saying before, the controller goes in and says, okay, you want a deed, we're, we're gonna, and you have a search uh, term, we're gonna grab the view that we have, which, which is all, all sorts of little bits of information of HTML. We're gonna go into the database and bring back all of our stuff. And we're gonna put together this HTML page, right? And for the user, they don't see any of this, right? If I go look at the page source, it's just HTML. The server puts it all together on the backside and the person who's loading the page up, all they see is pure HTML, right? Isn't that cool? So we were talking about ASP.NET being sort of more connective and being able to make more decisions and more, more information, right? In ASP.NET web forms, Microsoft had to kind of put a whole bunch of snippets of code and all sorts of bits and pieces in there to make that happen. In MVC, we have complete control of what we do with a website. There's no having to work around Microsoft to put these things together, right? Here are some of the other cool things you can do, right? This is another command that I'm issuing. I want to see the deeds page. So I am telling MVC, okay, I want to see a deed and this is the ID that I'm using. And this is the page that comes out of it, right? Isn't that cool? I can come in here too and let's use um, the deed as a search term, see what comes up. I can get all of the deeds for Craven County in book one or book two, whatever. I can manipulate this whatever way that I want, right? And that is the cool thing about MVC, which is absolutely spectacular. There's nothing, there's, there's no pages sitting there that have to be, um, uh, have to be changed out or, or, or edited by four or five different people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything inside of the MVC framework is completely separated and segmented, right? It's pretty cool. So uh, let me come back here. Just bear with me for a second. And that's what the, the MVC framework does for us, right? Because all of the pieces of the website are separated different people can do different types of work on different parts of the site itself, right? The idea of a developer sitting there and having to put something together starts to become a little bit less, I'm not going to say less important because it's very important still, right? There's still code behind, some code that you have to manipulate and create and all the objects. But the other pieces are separated. The HTML pieces, the data pieces, uh, the CSS, the images, all sorts of stuff has been completely separated inside that framework as well, right? So, you know, the importance of that, when you have MVC and you're using Azure DevOps, you can see where you, you have the foundations, the infrastructure, to actually put together better teamwork, right? You don't necessarily have to have one person doing all the work on one project. With all of that 
information and the application completely separated. You can have somebody else working on the HTML bits at their time when they have to do their work. You can have people working on the code. You can have people working on JavaScript. And with the Azure DevOps framework that we talked about in the last presentation, people can contribute at all times to the project. The project itself doesn't have to necessarily wait for one person to finish what they're doing. And so that sort of leads, I think we talked about it in the last presentation as well, that continual creativity cycle, right? Uh, inside of DLOS itself, we had Lee working on one part of the, uh, the site. Uh, Richard was working on another part. I was working on another part as well. We were all working because of this infrastructure that we put together. We were working on it on our time and our code and our, our bits and pieces were all completely uh, separate from one another. And, and that's what's what I'm hoping for with this framework, right, of putting these sites together, is that we're at a place where we don't necessarily have to have just one person working on it. We can have different people contributing their bits and their pieces of, of their part of the project. Uh, you saw in Azure DevOps and the other one, we also had project management stuff. So you had somebody kind of, kind of overseeing and making sure that all this stuff is put together correctly. But you start to see where all of this, it starts to, to be very, very interesting, right? And this is sort of like the next step of what, what a website can be, right? Isn't that cool? Questions, thoughts, concerns, premonitions? So I haven't seen any questions come in, some comments, some nostalgia for you know the old way of <laughs> let me back out of that. Things. Um, but yeah, does anyone have any questions for Danny? Thoughts, concerns, yeah, I, look thoughts at, I could, I could not, I could not, you know, monitor the 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 site itself. I know journal finder, I know. I was actually very excited about putting this presentation together because it was kind of looking back at where we were and how the technology sort mm -hmm. of evolved and changed to get us to where we're at now. And with that project, the Digital Library in American Slavery, it was so cool to, to be able to put together an entire data-driven website and, and have different people work on that website as well from their own computers, from home, at whatever time they were going to work on or whatever whatever's going on with their situation we work completely independent of one another but still put together that website right using this new framework using azure devops using the mbc and it was very exciting to kind of to kind of see that all of that happen right and and we're now at the point or like i was saying before i hope that sort of the ideas of this you know, kind of translate into other areas of the library as well, right? And not just in technology. It, you know, it, at this point, I'm talking about like the code and the application and putting the stuff together, but wouldn't it be cool if we can do this with the data as well, having different people in the library manipulating the data of, of an application or a website, right? And, and you start to kind of see the usefulness of this stuff. It, it really helped us build this application much faster than if one person just kind of sat there and did, did their work, right? <laughs> we, have, we have come a long way, but you know what's interesting about that? Some of the information on the site is still the same information. We're, we're still asking, students you know do a search you know check out a book some of some of the text and the language is exactly the same from like 25 years ago but would it ever change probably not <laughs> anything else thoughts concerns <laughs> it's true it's true the only thing that breaks are the developers <laughs> isn't that cool 
I, I hope it wasn't too technical. The MVC stuff was completely difficult because we were we were in the mindset of one file, right? There's a file sitting on the website. We have to change that file. We have to edit that file. And in, in ASP and ASPX, there were some centralized files and some other things that we, we could change or manipulate to, to change the page itself. But with MVC, there are no pages. It's completely mm -hmm. gone. It is a completely data-driven web application. Like I said, I keep saying fully realized. It was completely fully realized, right? Like at, the, at this point, all the pieces are separated and anybody, you, you wanna change the HTML? Well, then you go into Azure DevOps, make changes to the HTML. We push it out to the site and the site gets updated. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a single person that does that. If somebody wants to mess with the CSS, if somebody wants to mess with the data on the back end, that's a little bit different. But we can make and those adjustments, right? Everybody can contribute their own piece to the projects instead of it just being a page that somebody manipulates. Yeah, and you know what? The the data on the back end is. It's not, it's not bad at all, right? Actually, the reason that we use um, the Microsoft framework is because those parts are easier to work with. The data parts are easier to work with than in other frameworks. Microsoft Soft sort of does some of the legwork for you. All, you. all we're essentially saying is, hey, where's the DB? There's the DB. Okay, we, we established a connection. What are you looking for? Okay. We pull that data out and manipulate it, like I was saying, on that business layer with some of that code and throw it out onto the front end. MVC sort of makes that a little bit easier, as you saw, because the, the HTML is cleaner. Uh, it's easier to understand. You know, uh, We're adding another individual to the DLOS project, and hopefully we can uh, uh, start working on how you know, if, if you look at those those HTML, those little HTML snippets, as I keep saying snippets and snippets, uh, uh, you see where it's just, okay, well, here's a person and this person has a name. And you add it to the page and the whole thing gets built. Oh, this person has an age. Okay, well, you add it to the HTML and it gets built. And the server itself puts all that stuff together and puts it all into memory so that when somebody goes to the site itself, they just type it in and they go from there, right? And you can take a look at that at DLOS. It's really some really fun stuff. And it's, 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 yeah, MS Teams. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the scary part is that in Azure DevOps, some of those MS Teams bits are still in there. It's really quite fascinating. But with MVC, there, there's like no pages. It's just you're issuing commands to the server and the server's is building this HTML on the fly just straight up, right? And if you can actually look at that. Anytime you go, go to dlos.unck.edu and start looking at those pages and you can start manipulating the whole server itself based on that URL, the commands that you're issuing to the server. There's not any pages sitting on the box itself. It's just commands that you're issuing to the box. And it's just a different mindset for it, right? But like I said at the end of the presentation, <laughs> it's true. It, it's the, the fun is really quite painful. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Hey, I'm going to say with the Microsoft tools, I was able to put all this stuff together, right? I, and I do not have, the only background in this is that I have in this is that I sit down and do it. That's it. There's, I just sit down and look at code and I've been doing it, you know, for 15, 16 years now. But then that's, that's what I always say about Microsoft is the tools that they put together are really, really awesome. Where in other frameworks, you know, some of the free stuff it's not as easy to put together and to manipulate and to bring the stuff out. And, you know, some of the free stuff is kind of fidgety with things. 
where with these frameworks, it's completely business driven. Microsoft makes it easy for people just to throw it all together and put it onto a site. So if I can do it, anybody can do it, mostly. Thoughts, concerns, premonitions, preguntas. <laughs> if any of you guys want to learn more about this, please let me know. I'll be happy to show you more in depth if you want to get into uh, building something yourself or have any thoughts or ideas of, of any kind of contributions that you'd like to make to any of the you know, development projects or websites, just please let me know. I'll be glad to walk through it with you even more. Uh, unfortunately, with this presentation, I can't show you some of the stuff on the back end because of those links and important connection information that really shouldn't be you know, available to people publicly. But if you did want to see in the back end how some of this stuff is done on the database side, please let me know. I'd be happy to like walk through it with you guys. And I hope, again, that this leads to sort of a place where, where we can kind of have other people in the library working on these things and different pieces of these web applications and not just you know a developer sitting there and just working on the entire thing themselves. All right, well, I'm not seeing any other questions, Sweet. concerns, or premonitions um, <laughs> in the chat. So I think it's safe to say that we awesome. are wrapped up. Thank you so much, Danny. Thanks for the whole series. Thanks. No, to no, thank coming. you guys. Thank you so much. And, and again, you guys are awesome. And I hope that this is sort of next step stop. So. All right, again, lots of thanks in the chat. So good work. Awesome. You guys have a nice afternoon. All right. Bye, everyone. Take care.